we were, we were at his house one night. It was like a Tuesday night, and I remember we rolled this massive big porchetta, and it just, it actually looked, it looked killer. It was, we knew straight away it was going to be over the top. When we had it in the oven, it, it came out amazing. You know, I was on the couch. I think I fell asleep on the couch. It, was like it would have been like a night. It was, well, the pork belly is three kilos and it had tenderloins in it. So it's probably like a four kilo pork belly with meat inside that has to be cooked at a lower temperature than yeah. the pork belly on the outside to get the crackle. So it's actually like a pretty technical cook as well. Yeah. Do, so. And once we cut it up, we it just, you, you know when something's perfect, it like was perfect. And then I remember, oh, it would have been a few months later, I was, uh, I was doing a cook it was Sunday morning and I was sleeping on the couch because I was in and out of cooking. And uh, I got this message from Corey and I looked down and all I could see was my head and Gordon Ramsay's head. I was like, <laughs> my heart started going. I was oh, like, oh so God, good. here we go. And uh, so I started watching it and I'm, I'm waiting for it and waiting for it. And he just loved the video the whole time. You know, he just, <sighs> we, we couldn't have, you know, I couldn't have been happy. And I'm like running into the room. I was waking Melissa. I was like, Melissa, Melissa, you got to watch this. We made it. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And, Welcome to the Sevo Show. You are looking at my camera, the ones that's just facing me. But if you go to the main camera, you will see a couple of dudes. We've got Corey. We've got Leon. They're both known as cheat meats. And uh, you may as well call them brothers. They're not related, but they do love putting meat on the spit, on the barbecue spit. How's that? That's better. That's better. Good. better. Nailed it. <laughs> Good. Take two, that one. Now we've clarified. <laughs> yep. What sort of spit we're doing. Yep. <laughs> So how how did, did you get involved in cooking meat uh, for more than just recreational? A love, still a love. But um, yeah, what was it? Four years ago now, Leon dusted off his dad's old Weber kettle that was sitting in the. Well, shed. we've always had a fascination for meat, American barbecue. So we've all. I think there's a few times we used to go out, uh, go and have dinners. I think we used to go at Old Faithful. Things like that, and we always used to love the idea. Oh, old faithful, what the a old plug. faithful! Eh? Oh. Um, we always had that fascination of of American style barbecue, and then you know on Netflix they had all the uh, barbecue pit masters. So for us, we were, we want to eat, we want to trial this meat. So we started, you know, going around trying this meat, and then we thought, let's let's have a crack, let's let's start trying to cook it. And this is where these uh, the old Webers came out of the old man's shed, pristine, shiny. 35-year-old web has oh. never been cooked on. Oh. So, um, yeah, and that's where it all started. So we just started mucking around in the backyard. Just taking photos them. since yep. Instagram back then was, I guess, majority photo sharing. So cooking cheeseburgers really and just <laughs> taking photos of it. We were originally going to have a uh, uh, cooking show podcast sort of thing, <laughs> but things got busy. It's near Christmas time. Christmas Part trees two. are up. Plus Part we two. need the studio kitchen. <laughs> Part two, yeah. Studio kitchen in work. Yeah, that's our, our next thing. Oh, how far away are you from that? Six months. It, oh. need, it needs to be next year. I can't wait. It's for getting that. a bit ridiculous. That's going to kill it. That's going to kill it. You're just going to be the top tier Perth, Australia. So yeah, but uh, how I met you guys, uh, obviously through the TikToks and the Instagrams and yep. shit. And then Corey uh, uh, threw me a line, and uh, I made my way to Cairns like overnight that was a good trip that was a great trip that and was probably still our best work went, trip we've ever had you could you call it a work trip <laughs> we worked but uh it was such a good trip it was so amazing i i loved every bit of it shout outs to hunt and brew um it's not stocked up at the moment because <laughs> <did I laughs> you blew you up the last you saw, <laughs> my god yeah rookie error don't stack the fridge and put it on the way at the very back because <clears> it'll <throat> blow up as long so, as it wasn't left there for the weekend and you walked in. It was. It was. It was. Oh, my God. I, I rocked up Monday morning. The, the door was wide open. What does that I was smell? Like, it didn't smell. So I'm thinking that it happened like on the Sunday. But, oh, you know, yeah, right. rest in peace. It is what it is. But um, in terms of uh, the Cairns trip, that was great. It mm -hmm. was something, you know, never been to Cairns before. and Neither had I. <laughs> Did you? I, think I went, I went as a real, uh, like a young kid, maybe three or four years old. So I actually had no recollection of it. But uh, it was good to see, I don't know, like, yeah, you know when you're talking on the phone or we're doing little things together, but to be like a couple of days away yeah. and being out and enjoying each other's company, yeah. you kind of really get the vibe of who we are and like you do some cooking, hang out at the cast for a yeah. bit, go yeah. and have some good dinners and amongst it, the a pretty good lunch that we cooked as well. <laughs> so it. that was that was our I think party. We drank now. our body weight, well, in I drank my body weight espresso martinis <laughs> by the pool. So yeah, like I said, it was a work trip for us, but. Yeah, we could have one of them every couple of years. That'd be great. Every year, yeah. every year. You've had a couple recently since, haven't you? September. I think we had a couple in September. We did like a cook in Mount Isa, which is definitely like a country town, remote, sort of on the border of the Northern Territory in Big Queensland. Town. So it's just a, a 
town that's built around a mine really. So yeah. you get the travellers that sort of stop in overnight. But apart from that, yeah, there's not much there. So. Are you looking to do any like, uh, like I don't know, cater, uh, festivals, markets, things like that around the place, go down to Frio, set up a stall or whatever? We, we sort of get asked to do some of that stuff and from like a food vendoring standpoint, we like we don't really want to be seen as food vendors. There's obviously still a place for it, but our ideal is sort of leaning on brands from that aspect and then doing brand activations. So something that's based around obviously a protein, um, cooking that, having it on display. And then the ideal is then you're dealing with the brand that's supplying that product and then yep. we're just giving out free tasting. So we're covered for our time. Everyone, you know, service with a smile. They're getting free food. They're loving it. And the best way to convince people how good food is is to put it in their mouth so yeah it's- especially the way we cook it so you can have really good produce but if it's not cooked properly or the right way we've done a few of them now so, so i'd love to do more of that like even um is it beer and beef fest and yeah. all of that like i get quite a few people message you guys going to be down there and we're like well no so like if we could lean on a, a beef brand for something like that and spend two days out there doing stuff i've got it then it's a no-brainer i've got it january mm-hmm. summer jam have you heard of summer jam no Outdoor basketball. Yeah. They're doing something again this next year. Yeah. Same same uh, boys that do Snake Land, yep. Jamal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he's doing it through on behalf of the, the guys that organise it over East. Yeah. Maybe that. Yeah. But the ideal is then you, like we almost tie in what we do and then what the event is as well. So you'd almost still have it barbecue themed but be more like basketball styles so almost if you're at the arena watching the game what would you eat in that making standpoint? hot dogs so, and yeah pulled pork in the hot dogs yeah, and a whatever. brushed up version yeah. that's to ours but still marries in with whatever that brand's doing so yeah there you go that's, that's the stuff happen. we see value in than just yeah selling food They're to just, the general public yeah, yeah. So. and then you're also teaching them and going oh this yeah. is sick yeah. so what is your main overall goal you're looking back 20 years from now how is your success defined with what you're doing so I think the content kitchen is the next big step in that. So we, you know, we've, we've done the juggle now of doing videos. We've both got young kids at home. A lot of the time that can get frustrating because I've got a, what, a 15 month old that normally on Fridays, I've got her with me. We're trying to film videos and it's that finale moment where you can cut it once and she you know, yells out or cries or something. So it's getting to that point where the lines are getting blurred between work and home life. So. Ooh. You sort of got to start separating that from like a productivity standpoint. It just slows everything down. So, yeah, Content Kitchen's the the big goal for 2023, I think. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first phase. Mm -hmm. And then 20 years from now, you're just doing that at scale. You have the whole production team. Doing that at scale. I mean, having other people come on board that probably it's – it's not a hard space, but that can be just kitchen-based. There's plenty of cooking content creators out there, so – my idea, which I think we've had conversations about before, is almost managing a team of creators that are in that food space. I'll deal with the client, then I'll send out briefs, and then you can obviously 4X, 10X that from there because at the moment, you know, we're doing everything ourselves and that's where you start stretching yourself thin. And you guys, like, we can't do 50 videos a month on our own. So, yeah. That's, um, what about the wives? What are they thinking? Them cooking or? I was going to say helping or? <laughs> No, like uh, you're obviously managing the um, the work life balance and home life balance. Um, how are you managing that now? Been doing it for the last four years. Yeah, so it, it's for us. For me, it's getting easier. So my kids are getting a little bit older. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we can. My wife can see a bit of more light at the end of the tunnel. So we're not just doing it for the sake of doing it. Every time we do something now, it's a paid sort of paid thing. So yep. if if I'm cooking, she knows I'm making money. So it's sort of like, all right, we do what you got to do. So I'm kind of in that next level now that I don't have to worry about, oh, you know, we've got to do this, we've got to do that. Well, today I've got to work. This is what we've got to do and make make it work sort of thing. So And it's still squeezing all that time in. Like Leon still works a full-time job in four days. So we manage our time around that, obviously. So in the same sense, we've got to make the time we've got, say, on Fridays, we need to bang out three or four videos in that day because there's only four Fridays. Otherwise, it starts sort of leaking into the weekend. You still need family time and, yeah, it's that juggle. Yeah, so. that is tough. That is tough. Oh, look, we make the most of it. We, um, we're not shy to work extra hours. We're not, if we've got to work a Sunday, we work Sunday. So and I think that's that where we started is. off early on yeah. 
is we we were doing cooking videos out of passion and like every second night, if not, you know, three times during the week, he was at my house or I was at his house doing co- cooking videos because you almost start building that traction online and you either jump on the train and push more content out and obviously watch that snowball get bigger and bigger or you go, ah, I can't be bothered this yeah. week and you sort of just stall. So, yeah. yeah, I think we've had that big driving factor from the start that's pushed us. Now it's a bit harder to do sort of passion projects, obviously because we're stretched for time as well when we've got paid stuff on. But, yeah, I think we need to get back to a little bit of that as well. But with all of that stuff happening next year, that's the ideal. You can do all your paid cooking gigs, I guess, and then almost do sort of test, test kitchens and have fun yeah. with it. So That created that doing your own passion projects versus paid. It's that, a big difference. That balance needs yeah. to be catered well, to. Well, that's how we grew. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's how we grew to what we yeah. are. So, And you, you're sort of taking the mickey out of your audience, yeah. then milking them with branded content when they've mm. hung around. But saying that, we're still doing how to. So we're still obviously doing educational stuff. We're still doing the wow things like we've always done. So we've always stayed true to our brand and who we are. So on the back of that, you know, with your question with that 20 years, I can see us more going down the route of, having more of a subscription base. So, you know, every month there'll be subscription and we'll be doing our own things. We'll, we'll be creating these amazing cooks for us personally, not particularly certain And brands. I think the ideal as well as we build a bit more authority in that, I guess, barbecue slash cooking space where we, I guess you would still call it, you're sort of becoming more the talent behind the brand. So, you know, doing live cooking demos at events and then all the food goes out from back of house and stuff like that, same thing. You're not bottlenecking yourself where you can do one catering gig on a Friday or something like that. You're going to the Great Escape or you're doing events interstate or national where you're doing a butcher masterclass where a, a world-class butcher breaks it down, then we cook everything and then everything just gets sent out to, you know, tables of 200 people or something like that. So, Man. I think the talent perspective is yeah. I still want to yeah, push that, that as well because you're not forced to do X amount of hours to do X amount of things. So. Yeah. And that's where you build a bit of a more of a personal brand behind that as well, which is what we need to start, I guess, pushing a bit more. No, you're going well. You're growing well. It's my you're first time on camera <laughs> in, a, in a video. <laughs> you're growing. You're growing. Yeah. yeah debut. <laughs> so, um, and uh, d- did it take time for you, Leon, to get comfortable in front of the camera as well, being um, the, the well, star? In the, see, in the beginning, when we started doing cheat meets, it was only hands. So it was always just hands. Black gloves, sort of, hands and a knife. It was more really based on meat. all the actual meat. Yeah. Uh, back in, it was 18 or 19 when we went on the show. We went on a show. Uh, so we did a brief cooking show, which was, it was, I Two think months. the biggest thing for us um, going in thinking, uh, you know, we actually thought we weren't as good as we were, if that makes. Yeah. Barbecue, we probably were pretty much, we knew anything meat-based, protein-based, we had it covered. But it's, it's, it's all good. We are cooking the perfect steak but put it on a plate with a dish sort of like make it a complete plate sort of thing. So I think that's where we probably felt we were a bit lacking, uh, same as desserts. But when on the show, we actually found out that we can, we're can. we quite confident in cooking all aspects of food, even desserts, especially if we've got a recipe to follow. Um, but we got our confidence being on camera. So going from just having your, you know, your hands and the shot to your whole you know, the body sort of thing. Yeah. I don't even know how many cameras. 30 cameras yeah. and a big camera so, on a crane that comes through and looks at everything you're doing. Like we had, yeah, I guess a bit of a crash course in that over a two month period in Melbourne, which yeah. is really, really cool. And I think we came back with like a, a driving force again that, you know, that was really fun. We need to do more of that. Yeah. And people had this weird misconception, I think off the back end of the show, like, Oh, like you guys have grown pretty big because of the show. Whereas to be honest, the show didn't really give us anything. No. You know, people go on television hoping, you know, we're going to, A, win the money, that's great, but we're going to get chased by all these brands and do all of these things. At the end of the day, that comes off how you handle yourself on camera. But You still had to work hard oh, and mate. keep working hard. Yeah. Oh, we that's were, what I see a lot of influencers thinks, doing. Yeah, everything's reality TV. You go on TV, you're going to be famous. No, you get mate. your verification and then you're away. Yeah, I'm but, like, I'm seeing these influencers go on to these events with them and I'm like, who are you? Yeah. I call them closet NPCs. But, yeah, <laughs> the problem is, and even that stuff, like we early on, say 2019, we got invited to all of those things. You've got a pub that's doing an influencer night. Hey, guys, we'd love for you to come. Yeah. You go there, there's 20 people with their cameras out waiting for a plate of food to come out and I don't know, it's not worth 
yeah, in a, in a weird way, it's not worth our time anymore. Like it's not really. How would it be worth your time? For us to be doing the event, for us to be yeah. collaborating with the chef and running the event. So to go and get a free like meal. Yeah. We got invited to come to Hunton Brew. I was drinking the coffee a year, two years before Australia got released. Yeah. I've stayed in touch with them. I put stories up every now and then, not getting sponsored or anything because I love the coffee. Then Emily messages me saying, hey, we'd love to have you guys in Cairns. And yeah, exactly that. Th that's great to have a, a trip over to Cairns. But we want but to be a part of it. How do we build yeah. value on what we have and what you guys are doing? Yeah. So. Yeah, there's there's a longevity sort of thing in mind where you it's want to more keep organic. Moving. It mm. it betters their brand for that event. It betters our brand. Everybody wins. It's not so. a transactional thing. Nah, it's a long term nah. play. No, nah. and we were literally talking that. about this on the way here. Like, you know, you can do like a an alcohol brand promo video or something like that. Put something in a post, and you get paid for it from the alcohol company. But I'd rather do a recipe that's based around something that involves that alcohol. And do something organic and original than just put a post up. Yeah, like. I love it. I'm I'm still kind of teething in in between some random brands that I'm doing work with. Yeah, but uh, I'm I'm pushing my own stuff more. Yeah, like uh, unless it's something that I naturally use anyway. Yes. Um, like tall clothing brands is easy. Yeah. 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 But uh, for me now, I'm thinking about what can I do with food and the bully butcher thing is like no brain. Everybody eats. Everybody <laughs> eats and I'm just like, great. Bully, bully butcher, love them to death. Great stuff, great, great meat. Yep. And, and uh, you know, I ask you guys like, okay, I've got this fucking thick steak. I haven't actually cooked a thick steak this like this yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. I've only got my frying pan yeah. and it's not even gas lit. It's an electronic <laughs> plate. <laughs> What's my play here? Just do it in the oven. Oh. I would have done it in the oven. Yeah, true. Or I think what else did you message me about? Lamb ribs. Yeah, lamb, did a while lamb ribs, pork. The air fryer's gone clutch. Yeah. Never, ever again having steak in an air fryer. Maybe I did it wrong. I don't know. But Actually, we've never tried um, pork. We've done a lot of pork in the air fryer. Pork in Obviously, air fryer? Obviously, everyone does chicken. Amazing. But yeah. uh, we've never really done steak. But again, it's funny because, see, in the beginning, like when we first started, it was great. You know, you're getting hats and rubs and sauces and all yeah. that. You've only uh, got then, so much storage well, for all then, this then stuff. Well, then became the like you said. Then it's the meat killer. We're getting all these free meat. We're getting free seafood. So yeah, it was great. We didn't have to pay for anything. But again, it was all about the time. All the time it took us to cook, and all these cuts that we're doing. You know, you're talking like your brisket. It's a twelve hour cook. So it's all great. We're getting these free food, free meat. All the family was loving it because we're inviting them around. But it started taking a toll. We're like, right, well, we're doing all this work. Now we need to start getting paid for it, and that's when the it was bills. A clear. So it was a clear changeover. We like from now on, if we're going to start doing videos, we have to start charging for it. So you can send your free meat, but you're going to have to have a, a, a you know, it's going to be a cost as well. And I think that's like, I don't know, sometimes with producers as well, they don't really understand that side of it. They'll be like, well, you know, that's $500 worth of meat there, but that's like any other product that you'd use in a video. Like it's to an extent a prop where we're cooking it and we're doing what we do with it. But that's, we need that produce to do what we do. So to, you know, can you do a cook for a contra supply of a brisket? No, <laughs> not anymore. We That's used to. Sure. Four years ago, we, we used to buy it. it. You, you know what I mean? We used yeah. to spend two hundred and fifty dollars on meat a week just to do yeah. videos, and it, the same thing. You know, you go, geez, we're spending this kind of money just to do videos, and that was we were sort of just seeing how we went, and that was a passion project, and then it sort of snowballed from there. But you're like, we need to figure out a format where we can, I guess, monetize it because we're spending money at the moment just for fun. Yeah, so, which is fine, but. But you found the tipping you make point. The money. Right. You found we that. did, we did, and it was a good balance because we we started work with brands, and it was long term stuff. So, like Corey said, instead of doing the one off videos, well, let's do a uh, like a summer campaign or a winter campaign. So instead of doing one video, let's do four or five. So then you you know it's a bit easier to say, well, we can charge this much because you're getting bang for buck sort of thing. And then the beauty is we can then do more than one video in in a day, so you can bang out three or four videos for a client in one day then they might post that content every Friday for the next month. You're building them extra touching points with buyers of whatever that is instead of just dropping a post once and sending them a bill. So, yeah. yeah, it's a win-win for everyone. When was your big, like the first breakthrough, like your first kind of viral video or the one that you just went, oh, fuck, here we go, we're on here. We did a primary roast from Bully Butcher yep. and cooked it, what was it, probably a six-bone primary roast, cooked it. In the barbecue, I'd assume. Yep. 
obviously did the black gloves thing, had it on the bench, pulled it up, cut it in half with the ridiculous size like machete that I got custom made that looks like a car door. I still got one. Cut it, mm-hmm. pulled it apart, and that was it. Nice. And that is now what's part of our logo yeah. on Cheat Meats. And that got shared by like the Food Network and like some big things. And I think it's funny, almost as smaller creators, you get a lot more reshares from bigger businesses and brands out there. Like we were getting shares from Food Network, Snow Nine Channel. Gag, Lad Bible, like all of these things, which is great because we were getting awesome traction off them. But they almost try and focus on smaller creators that are doing really good things because less people have seen that content off their platform already. So it's better for them. Yeah, it's good. But yeah, those were probably the big first couple, I reckon. How long was that big? Then the, then the crayfish. I remember that was a massive video. It was one of the. I remember that one. It was like, it was, for me, it was like one of the worst cooks we've ever Poached done. Poached in butter. Yeah. You know, we literally, it was Good Friday. Hot cross bun. Um, we wanted to stay, you know, a bit on topic. And yeah, I remember just poaching this frozen. Somebody gave me a, a crayfish in the freezer, old, chucked it in this, all this butter, wrapped it in cheese, put it in a hot cross bun. And we just said, this was the rankest thing we've ever done. And it just, it did, it blew up. So it was just another video that um, looked amazing. Um, it went amazing, but yeah. again, but I looking think back, we did yeah, a lot of that early on. It was yeah. more just high engagement, yeah, balance between cooking something but just slapping people in the face with sort of outrageous stuff. Yeah. So that's where the cheat meats name, I guess, yeah. came from because it's, it was meant to be larger than life, you know, luxurious food like a cheat meal, but then it was over the meats. top. So <laughs> now, At least you didn't go to to one end of the scale and do how to basic. No, how to basic. No, you know he's from Perth. Is he? The I don't know the guy's name. He's a mysterious dude. Yeah. Have you seen the videos? No. So How To Basic is a, <laughs> I don't even know what I'd call it, but it's a cooking sh- channel and it literally just starts off with like here's how to roast a chicken or something and it start off legit and then just starts pegging eggs at it. Oh, whole, that where it's really fast. Yeah. And he'll throw like stuff outside. Yeah, and he'll start and, throwing a sink at it and shit. Yeah, and that's yeah, Perth. Yeah. That's, that guy's from Perth. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him. <laughs> yeah. He puts them on his like random stuff on his feet and yep. yeah. Just yeah. an absolute disgusting. menace. It's an it's a it's an insanity. It's yeah. Not too basic. The funny thing, <laughs> like the thing is with us, we want to have fun. We want to be, but the thing is, at the end of the day, we want to always stay super professional. Yeah. We want to work with big name brands. We don't want to be look, don't get me wrong, we all want to stay true to ourselves and and keep it, you know, as, as good as you can get it. But we're not trying to I feel like now we're not trying to cook just to almost grab attention we're trying to cook for more and there was a tipping point from that as well yeah. you know we were growing a following and then it was like to an extent we're being a bit crazy not like abusing the food but there has to be a practicality mm. side of what we're cooking so yeah. we sort of transition more into as simple as possible proper recipe cook so people can find inspiration and, and go oh that looks really cool but then they can figure out how to cook it as well if they yeah. want to but we always try and put the cheap meats touch on it yeah so we're not going to just do something super basic and easy we will but again we sort of still like that like remember the stupid steak thing we did for um squid games you know oh, it's yeah. trending oh, and the that's cookie jumping on and the needle and you know well. we've done all that sort of stuff before so we'll always do something but it's got to be cheap meats version you know what i mean yeah. so tell me about the uh pork lollipop and uh your little rise to fame with uh gordon ramsay I think it's still going around that I was the second that was actually every... second video we've done with gordon so really? the first one was actually the porchetta, the loaded porchetta. So we um we have our strategy meetings, you know, what we're going to do with recipes and all that, and we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. And we come up with the idea of, um, you know, tenderloins, beautiful I don't cut know of if meat. we even had that in the strategy yeah, meeting. Yeah, no, it was because, yeah, it was. I'm pretty sure because that's how I got the or idea. Or we were like, wondering well, how we were going to do it. Yeah, what and are we, then how are we going to dress just... it up? So we uh, were at we his house one. I was like a Tuesday night, and I remember we rolled this massive big porchetta, and it just – it actually looked – it looked killer. It was we knew straight away it was going to be over the top. When we had it in the oven, it it came out amazing. You know, I was on the couch. I think I fell asleep on the couch. It was like it would have been like a, night. It was well. The pork belly is three kilos and it had tenderloins in it, so it's probably like a four kilo pork belly with meat inside that has to be cooked at a lower temperature than yeah. the pork belly on the outside to get the crackle. So it's actually like a pretty technical cook as well. To yeah. Do, so. And once we cut it up, we it just you, you know when something's perfect, it like it was perfect. And then I remember. Oh, it would have been a few months later. I was uh, I was doing a cook, and it was Sunday morning, and I was sleeping on the couch because I was in and out of cooking. And uh, I got this message from Corey, and I looked down, and all I could see was my head and Gordon Ramsay's head. I was like, <laughs> my heart started going. I was oh, like, Oh so God, good. here we go! And uh, so I started watching it, 
and I'm, I'm waiting for it and waiting for it. And he just loved the video the whole time. You know, he just, oh. we, we couldn't have, and I couldn't have been happy. And I'm like running into the room. I was waking Melissa. I was like, Melissa, Melissa, you got to watch this. We made it. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And, and um, so that was like the first one. Everyone's like, how did you like, you know, how did you set that up? I said, well, we didn't. It's just, he's obviously come across it. Yeah. And he's just done a duet over it. So that was like a real proud moment. We thought this was pretty cool to get a bit of recognition. Look, we know we can cook. We know we've got good food. But when you've got a world-class chef that everyone knows that's commenting on your stuff. Yeah, he normally roasts He people. does. He really does. Now he, it's almost like he's turned the other way. Now but he's actually. He almost had a bit of fun in some of the banter he had throughout the cook. So then, especially on TikTok, he had people almost like trying to correct him in the comments as well, which is great, saying like, you know, you're wrong on this part or this is perfect or something like that, almost backing us yeah. up, which is good as well. That's what you want yeah. followers to that do. That I felt with the lollipop. So. He thought we were a bit over the top <laughs> lollipop. Look, it was over the top. It was ridiculous. Mate, I would but, eat it in a Mate, that was, again, <clears throat> and again, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, you know, you've got bully pork. Everyone loves bully pork. And we've cooked it we've cooked to death. We've cooked 52 recipes a year cooking pork. So. <laughs> so to come up with an idea like that, um, but the way we pulled it off, we executed it perfectly. Like it's just one of those things. We don't actually practice our stuff. We just cook one off. Like other chefs will probably sit down, cook it three or four times, tweak it, edit it, you know, change a recipe. Whereas we just go with the flow. Whatever happens, happens. Because that's what happens in real life. And exactly. And we have done plenty. Like we've done that beef shin. The first time we cooked the beef shin, we cooked it for like 12 hours. This thing will not pull. You know, I'm there and I'm trying to get my hands in there. we had to go out it. that evening. So we had to be done by you know, a certain time. Like 12 hours. Like, we thought, hey, you know, how can it just thing would not pull, you know. And and I just remember at the end of the video, like we could not save this bit of shin. It just wouldn't pull. So we looked at each other and we're like, you know what, let's just go with it. And I pretty much said, you know what, this thing needs another couple of hours. We should have done it for 14. So you're going to fail. And, and that's then we like did another everyone. one that was perfect. Yeah. So. Yeah, we cooked it for 16 hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My missus, she she makes the first try of any recipe yeah. Yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. And then the second time, Always she decides it. to do a Tweak little bit it. different yeah. fucks yeah. it up. But like she fucks it up in a way that it's still edible and delicious. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because she'll kill this me. This is still good, babe. Yeah, no. But like she thinks she wants to throw it out. Yeah. Because she's so disappointed. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's still good. Let me decide. Yeah. And I'm just like, no, this is great. She's like, no, you're just yeah. saying that. I'm like, no, this is great. Not as good as the first one, but she's got this always fucks up the second one. Yeah. And I'm like, don't change it. She's got to chill out. The yeah. Even if you cook it, look, the thing is with cooking, things change. Like even I feel like even, you know, like, my mum, when she cooks, you know, her, every time she cooks, it's completely different. Mm. Even if I add exactly the same ingredients, the same way she cooks, because I've got a thing that like her, her saucepans are different to mine. Like she cooked with Bessemer, I don't. And you can taste the difference, you know That's what I mean? That's a big difference. Yeah, you can taste the yeah. Bessemer yeah. flavour. You know what I mean? I'll never forget when my nonna or grandmother, she, uh, her oven packed it up, you know, this was years ago. And um, when they went looking for ovens, my dad took her. Mate, and she brought the roasting rack, the big dish where she cooks all her meals in to make sure it fitted in the oven. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what oven That's it was, so it had to be had to fit in there because if it didn't fit in, mate, you're not buying the oven because that dish is the flavour. Yeah, it's the pinnacle. So, so cooking for me, you can show people how to cook as much as you want, but again, it, it just comes down to that bit of touch, that finesse. Yeah, you got to know how to learn the, uh, to use the tools as well. That's how we yeah. learn. We're not – kitchen trained chefs we're not anything we're just two guys that got a kettle and obviously started cooking stuff had the opportunity early on to cook some amazing produce which if you start with quality you know as long as you're not completely stuffing it up the outcome's going to be pretty good so yeah. but yeah same thing early on you know close event here it's one degree hotter or colder you start stressing out whereas now mate just and i say to people i get messages all the time what temp does it need to be i say it's the, like just let it go mate like the more you relax through the cooks, the better your cooks are. So yeah, you should do like a once a week or once a fortnight webinar thing and get people to to pay for a that's ticket. The, You'd kill that's it. what the subscription the fails, needs to be. the bloopers. That's yeah. what I'm waiting for IG subscriptions to come out so we can. Corey's got like don't do start. IG subscriptions. Do something like Patreon or something. Get actually paid. Yeah, I, we Instagram toyed, won't pay your fucking shit. We toyed with yeah. Patreon a while ago. Yeah, so. or do your own thing. I'm, I'm doing my own thing. So yeah, we've the, always said we'd rather do our own thing than jump on. I don't feel like Patreon. It's more like, having a redundancy there. Like you've built, like we originally built following on Instagram. Then I think early on I jumped on TikTok and just didn't put any effort into it. So I had like a manager email me or whatever. Hi. And I just didn't follow it up. And it was probably a good, I reckon, year and a half, two years later before I started repurposing content from Instagram to TikTok. And we've got 
almost triple what we have on Instagram in a year and a half. So, mm. you know, it's been half the amount of time, if it's not crazy. less. And we've got almost, what, 850,000 followers on TikTok just from using the same content. So, yeah. Yeah, you need a bit of redundancy there and, it's, you know, you got to work off the notion that if Instagram died tomorrow, where where's your yeah. business? So, Are you on to shorts as well? No. Yeah, oh, no. get on to I think shorts. I put one or two up. But my issue with that, like, I have to learn slightly how to optimise I've got, it. I've got it for you. I've been practicing so, for the last three yeah. months. We've been building slowly. Yeah. We're getting around two, three hundred new subscribers per uh, month. Yeah, yeah. On on yeah. Um, yeah. YouTube. I've seen all your listen times and all of that. Yeah. And your hours. I've got my little until you can monetize. Yeah, but that doesn't count towards shorts. Yeah. Hence why I'm doing the podcast on there now as well. Yeah. That's an easy listen, and people just kind of turn it on and have it in the background, which yeah. is an easy hour every yeah. episode. But um. I've been getting, uh, I've got someone uh, working with me and they're repurposing all my TikTok content and we're, we're starting to really notice patterns. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you need someone to, to come yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, I don't know, to an extent like I, I handle all of that side. So mm. I handle the posting. I have obviously handled the copy and stories and all of that. So yeah. you, ha- you have to learn new platforms. You mm. can't just rely heavily on one. So. Yeah, it's, it's better something than not, else for sure. I, I need to add to my arsenal. Even Facebook, like I haven't really put oh, much time into Facebook, Facebook. for older people, man, is still uh, number one. I, I, I grew, I grew a thousand followers in two months. Yeah, over the last two months. I'm yeah. and you only need ten thousand followers to monetize yeah. Facebook. Yeah. So. yeah, and I'm not. I'm just per- repurposing. I'm yeah. not engaging as much as yeah, I should yeah. be. I'm not putting any exclusive content on there. I'm not niching it. It's yeah. just dipping your toes in everywhere. Yeah. I, I looked at Be Real and now it's a part of TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they they what they do it buy them out or they just No, they ripped it off. TikTok now. Well, yeah, TikTok now, but but TikTok now you can actually do the video if you hold it down, yeah. you can actually record a snippet instead. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. And you can actually add more to the one day. So they've already one up or two up uh Be Real and I'm just I've- waiting for the feature where they hopefully will make this but they can unlock a way to view other people's kind of month yeah, or the, their history of yeah. what they do every day yeah, because that's like going through someone's – A day in the life in – Through B-Real, yeah. short videos or yeah. photos. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I might handball YouTube shorts to Leon it. or something. Yeah. <laughs> Leon can do the, the write-ups for that one. I'm so pretty, you, I'm so pretty you, good at uh, messaging people. So what's your, what's your next uh, kind of collaboration you have in mind or is that a secret? What's your uh, collabs just come up randomly? We don't really have set people. You don't have any go new after. big things in the pipeline things yet. Things just things just pump. It's funny. You think we were going to be like having a quiet month, and then things just roll in. Do you know what I mean? We've still got like content agreements. <laughs> that's the per biggest thing, and that that's what I love do. about what we do. Like we we'd be planning for next year, so we already started planning for next year, and we've got a few goals that we want to hit and set. But again, like, hey, look, things could change and things could die out. But there's other things that, yeah, we just think, oh. All right, yeah, look, it's coming up to April. We've got a quiet month. And then all of a sudden things just book in and then it's, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Like, we've got so much on at the moment. We'll start with the Christmas special. You're going to do some ham roast turkeys, <sighs> something. We've already like, done so, yeah. one. done a big porchetta We're Probably going to do a couple of hams on Friday. Yep. And, yeah, probably a bit couple of, other ones bit of as seafood. well. Yeah, Christmas for us is always busy. Seafood. Content. Yep. It's, it, Christmas is easy because, you know, People, we know what people want. Mm. We know what we're – like I know what we want to have for Christmas, so it's just easy to replicate what we're going to be doing. Yeah, what's the most challenging meats to cook? I know that's scenario-based, but what's something that you want to give it a go but you're always kind of like, oh, fuck, it's going to be a bit hectic? It's funny for us. I don't think – a challenging word wouldn't be the right word. It's more about time. Mm-hmm. Time is probably more against so the us. the briskets and stuff. Yeah, but brisket you can do when you sleep almost. So, yeah, yeah to film a brisket, well, we can do it. But again, it's just you need that whole day, so you have other things going. But um, hardest meat to cook. Yeah, it's everything's it's, temperatures and times. Yeah, like, I think same thing. We've just learned instinctually when to check stuff. Like the less you're opening lids and opening barbecues, the more the quicker stuff's going to cook. And yeah. I think the technology makes it so much easier. Yeah, like everyone can put a probe, hook it up to your phone, it notifies you when it's ready. You pull it out. You know what I mean? So technology has made cooking so much easier, especially in smoking. Or you know, cooking meats even in ovens and everything. So I don't know. Maybe to answer your question, wouldn't be maybe it's it's for us. It's coming up with new ideas, fresh ideas to make it more challenging, more interesting, um, technical. I don't know. We don't. I don't find that we're all technically advanced cooks because we're just doing everything. 
basic. It'd maybe be like, say, more kitchen style cooks, like focusing on some like Asian influences or something like that. We yeah. haven't dabbled in much of that, and all of that foods. A bit of fusion involved amazing. with yeah. different, yeah. different. That's genres. where I'd rather infu- I'd rather do it with somebody else that's well known and bring their flavor in. Like every time we have like a few mates come around um, and we talk, and then we get them to get involved. They bring a sauce around, we yeah. cook it, and then you know infuse it. It's like oh wow, it's completely yeah. Get different. my mother in there for the Russian dishes. You see what I mean? So yeah. it's that's so I mean like cooking Italian, cooking barbecue. It's been done, done and that could be like a good opportunity for twenty twenty three as well as focusing. There's not as many cooking content creators probably in Perth. I I think, but doing some like fun collaborations with other cooks that cook different styles and sort of marrying those two up. We can use that content. They can use that content. Sort of, it's a win-win. Like yeah. we had, um, oh, Justin from Master Chef last year over a couple of Fridays ago. He's in Sydney, living over there, but he was over here for an event, and he came around on the Friday. And same thing, he's doing events and stuff over there. But he's like, you know, when I'm back over here, or let's tee up some stuff for next year where we can do a ticketed dinner where we can have some fun with it and stuff yeah, as absolutely. well. So, and you also had the the boys from Sushi Mango. Sushi, come in. yeah. Yeah, yeah we had a good night that night. The, we went to the show obviously the night before, had a good little chuckle, and then yeah, I think the highlight was for the boys coming over, having a bit of a barbecue around my house. I thought that was yeah, that was really good. It's, that was up there. Like, I don't know. Even early on, it's about like I don't see even numbers on Instagram. I don't see. There's no value behind that. That's no. It could it could be a thousand. It can be a hundred thousand. It can be a million. From a monetizing perspective, it means nothing. From where we are and i don't know our notoriety it doesn't mean anything as well like i say to people all the time the best part about cheap meats isn't even the cooking it's me and leon like when we go to big events like people just want to hang around us because there's i don't know there's a fun and atmosphere about us together like we've had master classes you know back in the day in leon's backyard and you've got 20 blokes there and they don't want to leave because it's just like 20 20 guys out the back having, having fun. Good and food, having free piece. Why would you leave? Were you cooking <laughs> sausages as well? <laughs> We're doing everything. Oh, big sausage yeah. fest? Everything. Everything. <laughs> it was a big sausage fest. But yeah, like early on, almost utilizing that following. And I'm, I hate, like, I've, I've got pretty good at it, like, over that. Like, building a following is great, but it's also about when people in certain, so it's a networking, I guess, perspective is same thing, putting out touch points staying in contact. So even with big reshares off Food Network and Ramsey, Ramsey reshared our TikTok on the pork tenderloin and I messaged him on Instagram and said, thanks for the share, mate, and everything. He's seen it. He's followed us. So cool. you've, you've built an extra touch point where that person, you know, you've you've they're in the back of, the, back of your mind somewhere. Yeah. He sees the pork lollipop, yeah. he shares it. So like even early on, big reshares on pages and even personalities, if they've shared something, I'd, I'd message them personally and say, thanks so much mm. for that, you know. If you're ever in Perth or whatever, so like, for example, Leon's a mad West Coast, West Coast Eagles fan. Yeah. So everybody's got to eat. They're big boys. They like barbecue. Yeah. So you start talking to a few of the boys. Gov, I think, was asking a few barbecue questions. Nathan at Bully Butcher is a mad Eagles fan. Yeah. I had Dom Sheedy before. Yeah. That's what we saw, yeah. 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 Good guy. We did. What did we do? His Christmas party last year, I think. But yeah, I think it was the first one. Gov, talking to him. Nathan at Bully Butcher's a Mad Eagles fan. He's a Mad Eagles fan. So I said to Gov, I said, how's about? And this was when Nathan only had Bullsbrook. So it's like a, it's not too far for you, but it's like a 40 minute drive. Yeah, yeah. So I said to Gov, how's about? We go for a drive, we jump in the car, we'll go and see Nathan at Bully Butcher. We've got to grab some stuff anyway. You know, he'll sort you out. I think I'd message Nathan beforehand and said, like, hey, we're, we're looking at popping in, like, without telling him who's coming. Yeah, sort yeah. of. And so, you know, Nathan was like a kid in the candy store. Oh, this guy's he's green man. Uh, were you driving or was I driving? Uh, I think I might have been yeah, driving. Yeah, I can't remember. So he's sitting in the car with Gov and we're just having general And this chit-chat. is them coming off the year of the premiership. So yeah. this was 19. Oof. They've just won the premiership in 18. Yeah. And I'm like, I wish I could videotape this and say to my man, look who I've got in the back of the car. <laughs> you didn't tape it? Nah. nah we probably we, put some things up. I don't know. Oh, we felt okay. like we were a bit more, I don't know. You know, I feel like oh, back yeah. in the day, I feel Less like people are a bit more involved. More, uh, yeah, but yeah. like we're trying to, we don't want to come off. We, we don't put them on yeah. a pedestal. Yeah. So Fair we'll boy. talk to them on a, exactly. a, le- a no, yeah. standard I level. It. I love it. Yeah. And we, we went out, we got him some meat, we came back, Leon mm-hmm. cut up some sausage. I don't know. Oh, I think we cooked some stuff in the Auto Wild that night. So we probably cooked some 
you know, a couple of really high marble Wagyu steaks in this 900 yeah. degree oven, pulled it out wow, and tried that. And that was it. Yeah. Word gets around the club pretty quickly. You start <laughs> talking to a few of the other boys. I think we had our 100K party at Leon's house. I think we had about six or seven <laughs> of the boys there. Nice. Just now, what blew, have what blew me away, I think, after we did that thing with Gov, next minute he's given us tickets to the game, which is great. But the thing was he gave us wristbands that we went down to the change rooms oh, yeah. after the game. And we're like literally. And you can't buy that. Yeah. No. You You're in there with the players, wives and girlfriends. We're looking around and they're looking around, who are these two idiots in the corner? <laughs> You know, and um, that was probably one of the, yeah, that was And pretty, I'm not like a, or I wasn't then. I'm not a mad footy fan, AFL fan, but because I knew Leon was, it was sort of, you know, how can I tie what we do and his yeah. passions in other places to almost just sit back and watch him, his eyes light up and, you know, just sitting there in the change rooms watching him like with Biffer on the mic, you know, and people are messaging Leon because Leon's on the BT, TV. Roaming BT. On the TV and he's going, what the hell are you doing in there? Like, I don't know. I If I can use cheat meats for that kind of good, that stuff like really, really excites yeah. me. So same thing. Leon loves sushi mango. So awesome. sushi mango comes to his house for dinner. That's- I asked him to get bocelli there, but, you know, that didn't work. <laughs> next time. Singing a bit time. of opera with him, that'll be all right. Yeah. So I think, I, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's good dealing with people in any space like on a level playing field you can talk no to who it is. CEOs yeah. of mm. companies yeah. and we've same thing been invited to a lot of events where you're dealing with people in big places same thing even though you're saying they're not in a big place there's but human beings still that's you right. talk to everyone on a level playing field you watch people tiptoe around in the background and not wanting to talk to them or everything mate we'll go up to their face have a genuine conversation mm. And th- that's where things come from. That's where opportunity, like that's yeah. networking to a T. You so. gotta, you gotta push every opportunity. Like kids message me on, uh, they comment on my TikTok. Say, oh, Sev, I saw you at like wherever, but I was too shy. Why don't you say hello? Say come on, I you call know? the boys in the cast. Yeah, they just, just come up and tap you on the shoulder. Yeah, and cans. have a great night, go on an adventure. But um, it's it's weird because like I know what it's like now on the other side, because you know people tiptoe around. I can see them. Like I went. I went and caught the train yesterday yeah. um, to, to go check, uh, go home for lunch and come back because I yeah. didn't want to drive. And uh, on the way back, I caught the the rush hour for school. Yeah. And just all the kids were just like like walking past me on the train like, oh, what the, what the fuck? getting their phone yeah. out. Like- no, they were like sitting next to me taking photos and shit. Yeah. And it was great. It was cool. But, um, yeah, being less impressed and more involved, that's what Matthew McConaughey says. Yeah. And just just being there in the moment, yeah. like Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers. He doesn't like the whole photo thing. Yeah, he just wants to be in the moment, talk yeah. to you. And yeah. same when when kids come up to him on a photo, I'm like, Hey, how you going? What's your name? Yeah, they don't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's my duty to go. Let's have a conversation first. Yeah, we can take a photo, but you know, teach them some some etiquette. Yeah, <laughs> no. but, but yeah, no, kids I love I love going. Yeah, the kids are kids. I love going to an event and going. Um, like like last weekend at Sneakerland in Melbourne, yeah. a guy comes up to me and he goes, oh, um, love everything you're doing with Sneakerland. I've been watching your stuff all the time. And I'm just like, thanks, man. What's your name? He's like, I'm Jeremy. I'm the commissioner for the NBL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah mate, they're the good like, people to know. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. that's cool, man. Yeah. But I'm like, I had no idea who he was. No. Yeah. And sometimes that's the best. Like even us, we've – like I'll randomly be talking to someone and then like once we finish talking, Corey will come up and go, do you even know that was I, I do my research. <laughs> Hell no, I don't know I who do that was. I do my research, you know, even yeah. if I know we're going into a space, I might not have a list of who's going to be it's there. It's like Devil West Prada. Yeah. It is so, so I got good. The palm he's cards. on my shoulder and he's telling me this is such and such, this is such and such. <laughs> <laughs> and it a lot so of the good. time because Leon's face on camera, people don't even realise even through Instagram that they're talking to me. So I'll run some personal stuff through oh, stories. Yeah. But I have these massive conversations with people, like at Meatstock in Sydney this year. People will come up and talk to them thinking they've spoken to them a million times and like, yeah, how are you going? Yeah, 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 we're good. Who the hell's that guy? And I'll say, oh, it's so-and-so. Have you ever like, thought about switching the roles? I've thought about it. I want to do like a month one yeah. time where Leon films everything. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> I want to see what happens. I'll, I'll get him to like, um, like that TikTok trend where he thinks he's filming it, but he's actually filming his face while I cut it. <laughs> And then it's you talking about like, oh, look at that moist. Yeah, and it's just meat. him like, <laughs> and you're just like, <laughs> but yeah, we are. Uh, yeah, same thing. Twenty twenty three. I think we spoke about it when you came around. Uh, whenever that was, probably a year ago now. Yeah, about goals. Year. And I said then like, we need to strengthen 
our that was like no that was longer that was pre that young. was pre COVID man we had that chat I reckon no I'm sure it was no I'm no. sure COVID, it was COVID when it was starting to hit I think yeah it was definitely sometime last year was it it was it was first half of last year I don't yeah. know all we know that was the first time I ever ate raw meat it was disgusting <laughs> oh my god that's so good. Sue it. that was um, that so was good. just bacteria I shat out. I shat fucking liquid that night it was just it was wagyu it. fat <laughs> Just like eating soap. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. I love it. It was fun. But um, yeah, I think we even spoke about it then. Like we almost need someone else on board to start shooting stuff so mm. they can capture yeah. us. I, I so. honestly reckon you can put in way more content than you do with filler stuff. So whatever you put out for that one cook, mm. and I'm sure you do this already, you have multiple different ideas. But kind of like what Lockie does, Perth dude, food dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does so many different angles and and – and he doesn't necessarily uh, keep uh, has to post that footage. Yeah, he vaults it for another time when there's a trending sound coming in. Yeah, yeah, he's um, been smashing the trending sounds. Yeah, and so the um, like the clips at the start at the moment, the last two weeks. I send him that. those. I oh, send yeah? him all of those. I'm like, found one. Here's another one. I think I've probably sent him one. a couple that I've seen yeah, on Explore yeah. recently. So you know, he's he's doing super well with that. Yeah, um, that element. But um, it's the same with you guys. Do you know who Lucky is? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm too busy working. Yeah. He's too busy working too. I'd love to scroll in, but I just can't. I just can't. And plus, because cause Corey's messaging so many people, it's probably easy for you to come across more people and, and talk to people that yeah. way, whereas I get in, I punch in, punch out. Well, you compliment each other. He's got exactly. the management role. Yep. He talks yep. to the people and you're just the rock star in front of the camera. Yep. Right? Do what I do. How yeah, many do DMs do, do you get from women going, oh, that's nice. Not many. You get a few guys. You get a few guys as well. I don't get to see the messages. If Doesn't he, that if, suck? If he see, if I, I don't know, maybe if I message more people, probably be, uh, could be better, could be worse. <laughs> I reckon, yeah. I, I'd love to see the DMs. Like, you, just, it's pretty good. Yeah. Like even from a vegan perspective. Nah, that was, yeah, that was no, all in the beginning, get, but there was not. It we don't get blasted or anything. No. And like we, whether that's because we try and keep it relatively professional whether that plays a part in it, but I don't get blasted by vegans, requests for oh, – you get the odd, like, comment where people say, like, will you be my husband or, like, marry me or something like that, whether it's a male <laughs> or a female. But he doesn't that's, go through the comments. That's and, because the meat just looks so good. It's got nothing to do with He needs meat. to cook for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've seen all these different videos and it's really just really cool to see that there's a Perth representation of it. Like, I see the guys in America do it yeah. and then there's some European kind of – um, I've seen like smoked eel. Have you ever had smoked eel before? No. no. Oh, I'll shit. add it to the list. That We've got a there. stingray wing in the freezer that I've got to try and figure something <laughs> to do with. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, smoked eel is one of the best things I've ever had in my life. Yeah, it's but like proper, so, yeah, like proper. a proper piece, not like a sushi mm, no. slice on uh, it. Oh, the, the eel nigiri is really nice yeah, too. Yeah. But there's this there's this smoky taste. Just takes me back to my to my motherland where yeah. we eat all this random shit. Yeah. Can't do liver. Put liver the raw sucks. onion on top of it. Yeah. I'm trying to get liver pate. I'm trying to get I've done a couple of pieces it. of it. I think I put a video up over a while. Yeah. It's it's probably the meatiest type of yeah. meat I've ever tasted. Have you done yeah. the wings much? Chicken wings? Yeah. We've got some of that coming out as well. Have you? Yeah. Have you you done- love chicken wings, eh? Mate, you just, you know, we look, need to chick- do a chicken wing The chicken episode. wing is so underrated. Yeah. It is so cheap. Like every time we go and buy chicken, we're like, holy – like, it's just so thirteen dollars for a whole pack of wings. It's, it's not the it's best meat. It's quick. It's quick. It's it's yeah. chicken is all about flavor. Yeah, it's what you add to it. Yeah, so um, that's why chicken yeah. is so versatile. Yeah, Bully Butcher does a great job with the. We, I had a chicken chili chili mango flavor mm-hmm. that was nice. They in got a sausage their, or just in a wing? On a, a wing. like a yeah, marinade wing, wing. Marinade, and then they've got maple. Oh yeah, and there's one I had the other day at the the old synagogue uh, yeah. in Frio. The, yeah. That restaurant, the the yeah. Jewish church. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, best wings I've had in a very long time. Ooh. And I was, we were just out for the anniversary, the wedding anniversary. Yeah. So there was no filming. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to come back here and film because that I is. I feel like we probably need insane. to change your mind about the best wings Next as time well at Nathan, some stage. Just get the wingettes. Crumbed, the crumb drum And just what you give the cheap meat boys and put them in the air fry and see what you reckon. The wingettes? Yeah. yeah. From Bully? Yeah. yeah. I did that recently. The, the crumbed drum ones? No, not, not the crumbed no, ones. It's all about that crumb. Okay. So just get the to say we want the same same crumb you put on for the cheap meat boys, okay, and then go chuck in the air fry and see what yeah. you reckon. All right, they'll be Easy. crunchy. My love it as yeah. long as you know the technique. The pool, the pool has to be. Mm, well, that comes on out point. of cooking, it's mate. Up to you in the air fryer, then. It's, it's all about the method. That's what I said, mate. Cooking. Twenty minutes. 
I don't know. Rotated side. Don't, yeah, we don't through. do chicken in the air fryer. We literally only do pork belly in the air fryer. Ah, okay. Fair we enough. don't do. We we tried. What do, what have yeah, we tried? We've done actually. Yeah. I've done yeah. frying on the pan that works really well. Yep. But air frying is just easy. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Clean up so good on the on the barbecue on the Weber. We do it do it on there. Oh, it always tastes good. But then again, see, it's only you two at home. I've got five of us, so for an air fry for me, I ain't gonna cut it. No, everything you get goes one in of those big ass industrial air fryers. Uh, that's why I've got it's three like ovens, a, a mate. Washing machine, <laughs> pretty much I've an oven. Two two ovens inside and one big one outside, mate. I'm wog. You should know, you know. <laughs> ovens everywhere. Worse than fridges. No, it's fridges are worse. Sufficient outside, oh, which yeah, is good fridges. for videos. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. No, nah, my my favorite uh, kind of meat of all time is not chicken wings. It's uh, well, my favorite dish of all time is lasagna. Like lasagna, went back, to, we went back to, went to Italy for the first time recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Oh, we were in Lake Como. Yep. Yeah. First place I tried lasagna in Italy. Oh my god, it was like butter. Came back here, was like, yeah, I feel like lasagna today. I was like, that sucks. I've ruined it completely. Ruined okay. it. and the coffee lasagna. Yeah, lasagna, but um, how to cook like the perfect mince with the bolognese sauce. Yeah. Oh, there's an art to it. But I also realized that reheating it the next day after it's always tastes like better. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's like and a curry. There's a science to that yeah. too. But um, I, I get sucked into cooking every now and then, not as much as I do as I used to. Yeah. But I'd see like Chebo, you know, Chebo from, yeah, yeah, yeah. from over in Sydney. Yeah, yeah. yeah Ali. Um, I see his burgers. I'm like, I need to go get some brioche buns. And I need to get some. He's done his job. Um, and I'm just like putting it. It's fun. It is. It's yeah. fun. You almost need to do an edit of your version where you roll out a map and like, oh, like scratch out exactly. your hometown or something. <laughs> yeah. And go, this is my, it's my it time. Would just be, it would just be lamb with nothing else on it. Not and even just a cheese. bun. Like no, a whole just lamb. lamb. Yeah, just lamb. Just a steak meat and of eggs, lamb. your specialty. Yeah. Oh, steak and eggs. Amazing. <laughs> my, my diet has been predominantly just just based on meat. Yeah. And I've been fine. And I get comments every now and then like, aren't you going to die? You eating you don't too have much? Veggies? What do you have? Three fried eggs and a, yeah. and a protein I, next I to it. I feel amazing yeah. when I'm like, not talking too much about keto stuff, yeah. like calories in, calories out, you're going to lose body fat, yeah. right? But for me, I feel amazing when I'm just purely based on meat and eggs. And, and lasagna. No, well, lasagna fucks it's me holiday. up. It's pasta, a holiday. Yeah, holiday food. Yeah. Pizza fucks me up. Pasta fucks I'm me up. I'm the same, mate. Rice, I'm the rice, same. No good. Yeah. Like I love sushi, but fuck rice. Rice fucks me up. Yeah, I'm like, the same. I go straight to sleep. Carbohydrates and, and alcohol. Yeah, uh, that's it. Yeah, and killers, I feel which so is a killer for better. everyone. But sparkling water and meat. Jordan B. Peterson's diet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then the sauce gets you too. So like the marinade on the chicken wings. Yeah. It's like extra calories, and I've got to dip it in some mayo or some yeah, ranch yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But um, nah. The the meat. I always go to bully, and I'm like, get me the fattiest bit. I got a lapa in Subi, yeah. the the Brazilian um, barbecue, and they're, and they're like, which one would you have? My mates, they all say to me, uh, we we had we had a dinner together like the, once. Um, rum Kanye, cap going yeah, yeah. Kanye, yeah. And he's like, what piece would you like? And I was and I was like, can I get the fattiest bit always? And everyone was like, what the fuck? Aren't you going to get like clogged arteries or something? No, that's not how it works. That's not bad for you. No, good things in moderation. It's, it's yeah, but it's not even that. It's the glue that you use it with when you have carbs. Yeah. In this, like, because I used to do talk about this all the time as a personal trainer. It's not, it's not the meat that that fucks you up. It's the carbs, yeah, and it's the gluten and all this. And yeah. nutritionists probably listen to this knowing, oh, you're full of shit. But yeah. from my observation, what I've felt like when I was a peak uh, footy player, yeah, I'd be eating meat only, and I'd just be, I'd have veggies? the most energy. No, no, no veggies. No, I'd have a carb meal after my footy game. Yeah, yeah. To just replenish that energy, um, and it was the best. And I had the only time I'd have a can of sugar Coke was when I, yeah, after the game, and it felt so good. But any other time, I feel like shit. Like I don't it's really waste, do them. Yeah, store. I do fat. fibrous veggies, but it's pretty much some form of protein yeah. and veggies. Yeah, I get most onions, of the time. I get capsicums, and I get mushrooms. Yeah, because they they make sense. Yeah, with steak and yeah. whatever, <laughs> asparagus, broccoli, no. No, no, oh, I, I don't I mind the, the taste, stuff, mate. and I used to have it all the time. Yeah, but now I'm just like, give me a five, six hundred gram steak, get a couple of eggs, couple of mushrooms, I'm in. Yeah, because that's all I had in Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, um, lamb on the skewer, we'd get the fish, we'd catch the fish straight out of the the river, we'd fry it, we'd gut it, fry it, and the skin like. 
I love the fish skin. Yeah. It's people good for people you. hate fish skin. I'm like, fucking fry that shit for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and then there's, uh, you go to the Asian shop and they have the fried fish skin in the packet. Yeah. That's like candy like for me. Oh. I'd probably eat it. You probably wouldn't eat it. <laughs> I can't stand that. I like fishy, fishy stuff. Yep. That's it's another like. Pork. pork for me, if it smells, I'm not a big fan. Oh. You know what I mean? So oh. I need to have off, good, off meat. Oh. Good, good quality food, mate. That's what, also what's another. One, what's one food that you just like, no, nah, never? Oh, there's probably a few for me. He's not going to eat liver. I've asked liver? him a few oh, times. Yeah, mum used to cook it when we were young. Good for you for the yeah. iron and everything. But yeah. Raw, raw, I have pate, but I wouldn't have it. Uh, I wouldn't have a raw. Like I wouldn't do it just for the sake of it. You know what I mean? So yeah. we cooked tripe on the show, and I just could couldn't stomach it. I literally gagged it out on camera. I just couldn't, couldn't stomach the it. stomach. Corey, was, what, what's I'll your try order? anything once, mate. Corey's what's, got no what's taste. something you've tried? You're like, no, nah, never again. I don't know. I'm pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Corey can I eat anything. Pretty iron stomach. Anything, anything. Whatever. It, uh, yeah, doesn't me, get gastro. Doesn't get. Sick. That's almost like another cooking series I want to do. Is like. Man Almost food. ridiculous <laughs> style foods. Like there's the um, the I saw them put it up the, the other day. Yeah, that smelly fish oh, that's cooked in the acid. Good, yeah. I want to film like me and Leon will the try Swedish it together. Delicacy, yeah. But I want to film him Actually, eat, try I've, it and me try it because he'll vomit beef. straight away. I've got that beef want, jelly in the can. I want to do you, Carla? Oh. And he's like, "Why do you want to eat this?" I said, "I oh, don't." He goes, "Oh, but Corey asked for it." I'm like, "Yeah, because he wants to make me." Sterling Fresh IGA in Sterling, and they do this beef that's in the can, so it's in like jelly. And I messaged them, or it's I like commented. Food, I said, I'm "I need to film Leon trying to eat this." So the and jelly, the jelly's just the the fat. The fat That's all it is. Yeah, I love that shit. There you go. That'll be the first one that we do. No, He's but the, the, the Swedish fish oh, the, yeah. that will stink, man. People, when they crack the can, they everyone gag. starts dry reaching already. <laughs> Have you seen where they purposely drink milk at the start so they can express their vomit even better? No, no but I've seen a few videos. Look, they are hard attempt it again. Like, <laughs> you're like, why do we need to do this? Because that's driving personal brand. It's what, for bands. People want you. Pe- people want to see. Or do not, you don't have to shock spew. value. <laughs> they want to see me laughing at you. Exactly. Spewing. That's what yeah. it all is. For me, it's celery. So. Fuck celery completely. Oh uh, yeah, I like celery. When yeah. I every every time I order chicken wings anywhere, it's always and two little sticks of celery, and I just literally just go sing. Yeet. <laughs> no thanks. And canned corn, like specifically canned corn. Yeah. And corn on the Sweet. cob's okay, but that smell from the can. Yeah, yeah. That's not natural. Yeah. That's not going inside me. <laughs> You know, like it doesn't corn, matter. It comes out the same, same way, way, mate. Yeah, corn doesn't even process in <laughs> your body. So yeah, why the fuck would you have it? Yeah. Love popcorn, though. Don't get me wrong. The, <laughs> s- the celery, this is smell, and like even if it's cooked through in the soup at the at the hot pot or whatever, I'm just like, oh, that's ruined it for me. That's ruined it for me. Actually, in Kyrgyzstan, grandma used to make spaghetti, right? Like spaghetti, just spaghetti by itself, cooked through it, on the plate, but in milk. Wow. Yeah. In milk, yeah, it's fucked. I don't. I hated it. I was. Look, like, I'm a big textural person. For me, it's all about texture. Yeah. If it doesn't, you know, taste is one thing. I'll eat it. Like I said, I'll eat, I'll eat most. There's things, some but- things that when I filmed because it normally finishes with him taking a bite. He he's he's spat it out when <laughs> we've cut. Yeah, yeah. So or he's taken a bite and stuffed up the words. So I've got to try and put whatever it is back together so he can go again. That, the outtakes is the that. biggest killer, I suppose, when we film. Yeah. I need more of them up as there's, well. There's nine uh, times out of ten I'm going to stuff it up. <laughs> Absolutely. So what's some advice you'd give um, to people wanting to start um, smoking meat for the first time? Biggest advice is give it a go. Don't be scared. We find that nine times out of ten people are worried they're going to ruin it. They're going to overcook it. Um, and just start basic. It. Like yeah. go and get – the a cheap Weber kettle that I think they're about three hundred dollars. Start with that before you go. Like blokes want to go and spend three four grand on a smoker. I've never done. And before. they'll they'll cook with it twice, and then it just sits there and gathers yep. dust. So go and spend a few hundred dollars on a the standard Weber kettle. Learn fire management and and everything with that, and then if you you love it and you've got a passion for it, then you know add to your arsenal after that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then in terms of the meat, what's a good meat, cheap meat to practice on? Beef short ribs are the Shorties best are thing probably to the best. start They're with. They're not cheap. But you can't stuff them up. A lot of fat, them. a lot of marbling, so you can't dry them out. You yeah. can't overcook them. And it gives you, I guess, like a toe into that low and slow style, like a brisket. I'll get people message me and say, hey, I'm doing my first brisket on the weekend. Have you got any tips? And like I it's getting to the point now where unless you're – You need a landing page. And, yeah. And that's how you get your emails. Yeah, I know. This is advice. Grab grab a frequently asked question sheet and just write it out. Yeah. And get a graphics – I'll get you a graphics designer yeah, yeah. for you. And she'll make it all pretty and stuff. 
to the point. Mm. And then every time someone asks, goes and just automatically. Well, that's an easy organic way in. to do it. Yep. That's for sure. And then that's how you get the emails. Yeah. And then those emails will become a subscription. Yeah. For chimp mail, whatever. Every week you can email something. Yeah. If you need a copyright, I got you. Yeah. And then from there starts the process of monetizing that in your own little yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. infrastructure. Yeah. Because you've given them value. That fact sheet will give them value. Yeah. I'm doing my first brisket. Give me tips. Yeah. You're doing your bis- brisket for the first time. Here are the top five tips. Also, here's a link to a video that we did a brisket yeah. for. Bang, people are watching. And that, that's pretty much the stuff we've spoken about doing. That's what you need to so. build next, I think. I reckon that's what will really drive your brand further forward yeah. and to be able to monetize it even yeah. further. Off the platform. You know? Yeah. But again, we're not here to do the uh, the business advice. We the, can. We could do it at another time. Yeah, yeah. But um, if you guys were to give uh, advice, just living your best lives, um, as you are now, if you could give advice to anyone out there about anything, what would it be? It doesn't necessarily have to be related to cooking. Go, Corey, oh. Liam. For me, it's just work hard at whatever you try, just give it 100%. My advice, even if I had to give my advice to myself, say 10 years ago, you're doing a good job, just keep pushing, mate, because it, it gets easier. I feel like I'm not even halfway up. I feel like that's yet. come from his upbringing, though. Like he's been pushing wheelbarrows since what? I've been 10 years young, old a young or age. But yeah, for me, it's week. just like, like we said before, mate, we'll give it a go. We're not going to say no. So my advice, and, I, and I've told people this many times, if you want to have a crack, just just do it the best you can and don't stop. Just You're not going to see results. That's, a, that's the biggest thing we've discovered in four years. It doesn't happen overnight. You think that fame, that And people that will assume that as well that, very quickly, but... You just keep going. Yeah. yeah. You have You'll to get these patience. lucky people. They'll do this amazing viral video and become, you know, sensations and millionaires and all that, but it's like winning the lotto. Even that's still in the back end. Yeah. That's definitely still never an overnight thing. No. Like, you you gotta you gotta push out to to bring that luck in. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Easy. What's and your I, advice, mate? I feel like me and Sev will probably be on a similar mindset with this and it's probably vastly different to what you think, but almost like prioritize what is important to you in life. Mm. So yeah, what have I been doing this full time now? Two years. So I was juggling like what Leon's doing now. I was juggling work. I think I was managing four different brands, social media accounts. I had a 14 month old baby at home that the mother-in-law was looking after during the day while me and my wife were working. Yeah. Doing checkmates. And doing that amongst all of that as well. So, you know, I might be doing, depending on what we're doing, doing a fly in, fly out, four day commissioning install of some mine site, come home on a Friday afternoon and then tell my wife that we've got an event on on Saturday or something like that. And so she, she, to her to an extent, she's like, you know, I'm drowning here. With like there has to be a bit of a give and take and like, yeah, I don't know, it became very quickly once I took that leap. I think the tipping point was I was pretty much making the same as what I was, if not a little bit more from doing all the cheap meat stuff as what I was doing on my wage. It's great to have both in there, but you can't manage that. Like you just burn yourself out. I was pretty much burning myself out and got to the point where I was like, you know, who's raising my kid? We're just working and coming home and I'm not seeing my kid and there's that age old thing where, you know, once they're four or five, they're in school five days a week, you never get that time back. So that became a big priority, I guess, in my life where I built, I guess, a wage out of not working at nine till five, eight till three, a full-time job, whatever that is, and started doing all of that stuff. And it's freed up well, so much time. That's like, goals. I still have to do that juggle now between whether it's one kid or two kids at home and trying to run a business and run other social medias and squeeze all our stuff in but you know in five years time kids are in school that's it you can focus on that more so and really i don't see us going backwards like if anything you know the next year should be quite big for us so this should only grow from strength to strength so yeah i don't know that's my biggest thing what's your priority in life and like what was i I think i was 145 kilos trying to juggle work trying to juggle cheap meats building a house coming home drinking falling asleep on the couch doing the same thing like it was that give and take on like is this this isn't a life like so we finished the house i quit my day job managed to you know find time for my kids find time for my health go to the gym every morning come home wife goes to work i've got the kids like where like you have to figure out where your priorities lie 
So yeah, and my priorities at the moment are hundred percent there. Yeah, like, and even if if you have kids and you are not happy with the job that you have possess, there is every possibility that you can escape that. Even if you have a house, a mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you have this a, is what a I'm going family. through at the moment with this guy. But same thing. There's risk involved in that. There's risk in everything. There is, there is so. risk, but the rewards are much better than the regret that you will have later on. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that's for me saying I don't have kids yet. I yeah. don't have a mortgage yet. Yeah. And I'm observing it firstly as a school teacher. Yeah. Um, former school teacher, and I'm seeing the the mistakes the parents are making. There's one kid I'll never forget this, but I had a meeting set up with the kid's family or the kid's parents. Yeah. wasn't wasn't that great of a kid. He had a lot of potential. The parents flaked on me the last minute yeah, saying, yeah. sorry, we can't make it. We've got work. I'm like, yeah. you are not prioritizing it the right way. Yeah. So, you know, and then they say to me, it's easy for you to say you don't have kids. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but what's the balance when it's not at the end of the day, you, you fucked it. But everyone's perspective is different. That's yeah. the, the yeah. joy. So me now, like in a weird way, I know, I don't know, it's a weird way to think you quit your job, but you know, to an extent, I've got my wife to lean on a, a little bit from an income perspective, but like you sort of know money's going to come to you in one way or another. And yeah. normally it's more than what I would have been working a wage anyway. Have you got so, inheritance that you haven't oh, told me about, no, mate? I don't think so. <laughs> hey, is that no. what you're saying? That's what you're hinting? No. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Love it. That's right. that's the, the, the push we've got for next year is, yeah, trying to figure out that because it's the same old thing really like and we've had these conversations you can't build an empire working no. one day a week on it or two days a week on it that's so. it oh, don't well. put don't let <laughs> work or anyone see that but. <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh, thanks for coming in guys i've learned Thank a lot you, mate. and i'm keen to Tell see the journey continue and uh being on the chicken wings episodes and wang um you've got some rub talk about your rub before we head off you brought that in you're gonna bit of cheat meats rub. You're gonna plug it. So that was our the old one in. You didn't even bring the new oh, one in of this one. This I is, just grabbed uh, it from the box. So point we've that, um point that at that camera there. Point the so point the pork one. This is the the pork one. The beef one looks pretty much similar, but red. This was our version two, I think. This is version three. Um, again, rub started. We again we're getting so much free stuff, free rubs. You know, we're doing these amazing cooks, and then we we're eating. We're like, mm, it's pretty bland. Like we yeah. thought the flavor would be more. So we thought let's let's develop our own rub. So we started with the beef rub, um, the beef charcoal rub, and this is like for us, it's 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 a it's a unique flavor. It doesn't matter where everyone goes. Like for example, when we're in Mount Isa cooking for 150 cowboys and cowgirls and what, no one else can cook meat here in uh, Queensland. Well, yeah, they can, but not our flavors. And people were wowed. Wow. Um, you know, the CEO he pretty much said this is one of the top five steaks I've ever eaten in my life, and it's purely because of our flavor. So it's it's one of these flavors I'm really proud of, and then obviously we we cook so much pork, so we thought we have to make a pork. We have got a chicken got one chicken coming out. Could almost. I just like could I just like sprinkle that on? Like I like forgive me, but if I just cook the steak and I go, oh, I thought fuck, you were going to sprinkle on the table and say you wanted to snort it. <laughs> yeah, you can do that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had Probably mates eat mouthfuls of it, well. but this yeah, this goes on any type of red meat. So it could be like after you cooked it as well. Nah, Probably better you cooking probably cook before. Okay. I would always cook right. before. So yeah. even in your fry pan, your oven. Yeah. Uh, we've even sous vide with it. So, yeah, it's – um. so, yeah, that's our thing. So we've teamed up with um, a couple of boys from Jerky Co and they're all in the Jerky Co shops all across Perth and Ooh. obviously now it's getting shipped worldwide. So this is just the tip of the it's iceberg. It's another avenue yeah. where, you know, same thing, you're building a brand, you need to have some products behind that to start pushing. It's an organic way to do it. We've, we use it. We've created it based on our flavours. We love the stuff. So nice. if people want to try it at home for themselves, they can. I've got a Jew, Jew uh, shop with the boys, the Bully Butchers, tomorrow. So I'm going to get some uh, un, unrubbed. Yeah, just un, get your normal steak. And normal steak there, yeah. and I'm going to, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But um, thank you for coming in. That's all right, mate. Thanks um, for having us. Everybody coming in, listening at home on the podcast or the YouTube. Um, yes, we have a YouTube now. It's going hard. We've got the different cameras. I'm looking at three different ones. I really should only be looking at two. There's one there. And there's one there, the main one. Um, feel free to comment below. Uh, you, the details are in there. I'm going to put up a poll on the Spotify section and uh, ask the boys away uh, any questions. Otherwise, uh, head over to uh, their Instagram and, and slide into Corey's DMs and ask him questions. He's been asked a thousand times because he loves it. <laughs> but, uh, I'll answer some of them. Yeah. Pleasure. Uh, as always, guys, good thanks. See you later.